A holy thief, you also talk about the ancestors paving the way for us to be free. So uh, as that, as people work toward being truly free, what steps do you look at that were significant to get us to the place where we are to try to make these changes? Um, we have to give up certain mentalities. You know, we have to, um, we have to want, we have to want it. You know, we have to want the change. We have to want to empower ourselves and better ourselves, you know, um, economically, mentally, uh, spiritually, physically, we have to do those things. We, we have to get our minds in tune, study things, read things, you know, explore different things. That's what we have to do. Absolutely. Now, another track is the Food, Clothing, Shelter, which also has another uh, piano. So shout out to Armreal. I really like the piano beat you guys picked and used on this project um, right. and the juxtaposition of it. but. Um, for a holy thief, I wanted you to explain. Um, that one also has kind of the the inspirational thing and like the self motivation that kings and queens you can do anything. So I think in the midst of the anger and the frustration that is, you know, that resonates throughout Runaway Slave, there are also these parts of it that are very like believe in yourself, you can do it. Messages. So for you, how do you why is that important to sprinkle in to the anger, to the frustration? Because we we can do it. We 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 strong. I mean, if we could go through the police killing us, we could go through slavery, we could go through Jim Crow, you know. At one point we created pyramids. So we need to return back to that. You know, we need to re return back to um, being scholars like in Timbuktu, we, we need to return back, you know, we, we no longer the, these jigaboo spooks, monkeys, niggas, we kings and queens, you know. The time to party and it's the time to wisen up. So in the industry right now, there's like, it's a, it's a bunch of party stuff going on. Definitely, I love to party and have fun, but right now it, it's, it's not the time. It's, it's too many too many deaths amongst ourselves uh, that's going on. And, and, and with the right cleaning up of the mind, uh, we can be better as a people, which would help everybody as a nation, which would help the world, basically. We need food, clothing, and shelter out here, but the way that Basically. people, the way some type, the way you get it sometimes might not be the right way, especially when you're killing your brother or your sister or taking away somebody. Uh, uh, loved one or something like that. You know, it, it's a recurrent story. It happens all the time. So, absolutely. And also on there, Holy Thief says about you know people getting life for peanuts, and I think that's also important that the laws, of course, are not uh, enforced fairly, evenly. They never have been, and hopefully they will be one day. But they aren't at the moment, and I think it's in that line sh struck with me and that type of thought is important because I think it's important that people understand like whether things are quote unquote right or wrong, you're risking all of this for what, you know? And for you as a writer and as somebody that's trying to help exact and usher in some of this change, why was that an important thing for you to point out, Holy Thief? The, the systematic racism, I mean, it's, that has been a, a thing overlooked in America. It's been overlooked and, and now it's time to stop overlooking. Stop giving us higher penalties for the same thing that a Caucasian guy might be doing. So yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Treat us human, treat us like humans, not like animals. Right, that'd be a good first step. So hopefully that starts happening, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That would be a, a, a first step. And then I think also on another one of the standouts, Justice, which concludes the EP, that was one of those ones where we really get into the, uh, you know, 
holy thief, you're talking a little about the Constitution, not set up to give black people human rights and mentioning Tuskegee and Black Wall Street, kind of opposite ends of, you know, brilliance and then genocidal activity at the same time. Uh, and then eventually what happened with Black Wall Street is also genocidal. But um, the point is, these things uh, in justice are showing that the law, history, and the brilliance of succeeding are all there, you know, if we choose to look at them. So for Black Wall Street, Tuskegee, how do you learn and apply lessons from those things into your life? That's trying to be great, trying to be as good as that, um, trying to achieve things like that, trying to not only make it good for myself, but make it good for my brothers, my sisters, everybody else, not just myself. So that's what it is with me. Okay. You got to stop falling for the tricks. That was a, that was a, 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 a bad trick that was pulled over on us. And uh, got to wise enough on the things that they do to affect us in the community that keep us subjugated and keep us down. Right. So we do need justice uh, on cer certain topics and things like that, definitely. Yeah, and then Holy Thief also talks about uh, people don't act like you sympathize with my struggle. So uh, something I've never understood is why do you think people, and mainly in this regard, white people, why do you think it's so hard for them to understand the struggle of black men in particular, or black women, or non-whites. Why is that so hard for people to uh, register with them? Because they haven't walked in the shoes, maybe. Um, the coin has is, is never been flipped to them. Um, they might not understand or, or, or been around um, Black people to understand that, maybe only just in certain certain situations, maybe on the job. But you know, sometimes you might act a different way as a black person on the job than how you do when you come home. You know, you 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 might let your hair down. So it's it's a difference. So they don't see what the struggle is. They don't they don't understand what the struggle is unless, you know. They spend time and and hang out with the person and know that person. Right. And then, you know, that I agree with all that. And one of the other things that runs through a runaway slave is the interludes that kind of depict this slavery type of time that I think sadly parallels a lot of what happens now. So uh, thematically, structurally, and conceptually, how did you guys work to make these interludes and these skits to have them flow through the album? Well, Runaway Slave, we want to make complete projects. Every project, every every time we come out or release something, it wants we want to be complete. Just not scatter songs, put together songs. We want everything to run together so you can sit down and really listen to the whole thing from A to B, A to Z, shall I say? Uh, the skits came about. We're kind of infamous with the skits uh, coming up through the studio. Uh, we made a lot of uh, great skits. And, and that one right there, we, it just fit the time. Uh, we got some of that uh, Voodoo Ranger chilled out in the, in the studio. And uh, <laughs> shout out to Voodoo Ranger. Uh, we, 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 we created some uh, wonderful skits right there. It was pretty fun to create the skits, rather. So, uh, but definitely, we, we took it to a time zone from. Uh, slavery, and then we tried to up the years, as you see, uh, to the last one, Jackson and D Street. And uh, that was part. Go ahead. It, it kind of shows you that nothing changed too much. It's been the same thing. That's, 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 you know, that was one of the things that we was trying to shoot for, too. Right. Which is uh, sad and, and telling at the same time. So, uh, congratulations, first of all, with the Runaway Slave. But with that going, 
you know, you guys have a lot of great artwork for it. And, you know, I think it's a great project, which is why I wanted to interview you guys about it. But, you know, what are the next steps to build on Runaway Slave to keep the momentum going? Mm. Well, he's already reloaded. I, I, I need to catch up on uh, getting the recording done. Uh, we're definitely going to be re releasing something uh, within the next couple of months. Uh, we're just working this project. Uh, we have to shoot the video. We're working on that right now. Uh, there's a lot of business things that are going on, but we're definitely uh, working on more albums, complete albums or EPs with Holy Thief. Uh, and we just have to record them. The beats are there. Just have to go and get in the studio. Okay. And one thing, just as a curiosity, uh, since we all seem to like digging in the crates a lot, Showbiz and AG, of course, had Runaway Slave album back in 92. Did that influence or affect you guys at all, or? Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna speak on this one crazy thing. So, I had no clue. I, I knew about the album. I, I, I definitely listened to the album, but it wasn't on my mind as we were making it. No Runaway Slave album in history crossed my mind. But as we released it, boop, boop, I Googled, and there are so many Runaway Slave albums and songs, but this one stands out right here. I mean, the artwork, the the music speaks for itself. Uh, digging in the crates, I, I love them. Uh, I, it was just a coincidence that I'm pretty much that we ran up on it yeah, like we, that. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I totally forgot about that. But I mean, that was a great album they did, Digging in the Crates, Showbiz AG, all of them. Diamond D, Lord Finesse, all of them, all of them. Just great. I mean. You know, they inspire me anyway, you know, some type of way, because, you know, it's hip hop. I love hip hop. So, and one thing about, okay, just Diamond D or uh, just that, that Sally down on one track, Ma, when I was young, I wasn't making beats around then. And this is how I kind of got into thinking about even creating beats when I got around to the studio it was just uh, how did they chop this up? It wasn't, they weren't playing instruments and stuff like that. I was like, wow. And then I got around the studio. And we had thousands of records and, and chopping it up. And I, I saw the formula, but I, I try to emulate digging in the crates, DJ Premier. I even, I like Alchemist. I mean, they're, they're masters at what they do, but uh, it, it's time for me to step up and, and my sound has to be heard. Well, there it is, y'all. Cool. Well, Holy Thief, Arm Reels, or anything else you guys want to add about Runaway Slave or anything else you guys got going on? Um, check out the website, lostfoundrecords.com. Um, the Holy Thief Runaway Slave on all platforms. All platforms. I repeat, all platforms. YouTube, iTunes, everything. Oh, get ready for videos. Get ready for videos. Videos coming out soon. I'm about to get stupid on y'all. All right. Word up. Peace, peace to everybody. Peace to the gods and nerds. Peace to Las Vegas. We're going to hold it down. And uh, definitely, definitely get that album and enjoy it. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you, Soren, for everything you have done in the past. Loose minds to the death. And uh, appreciate it, sir. Yeah, and do you guys have, well, thank you. And then do you guys have individual uh, social media you wanted to promote as well? Um. The Holy Thief, the Holy Thief uh, like page um, on Facebook.com. Okay, so you could do Lost Found Records on Facebook, Arm Real on Facebook, uh, Arm Real on Instagram, and uh, Lost Found Records on uh, YouTube. What was the last one? Uh, Lost Found Records on Instagram, if I didn't catch that one. All right, cool. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you 
the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, Bob, on your TV back with that WA? Yo MTV, it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.